My name is Aaron, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about how to make a gel. So bear with me, I did it for the first time a couple weeks ago, uh, so I'll tell you what I learned. Um, is there anyone here who doesn't know what a gem is? Fantastic, I don't have to explain it. Um, so creating a gem. But, you know what, I, I, no, what's the I don't know you know that, but could you just say what a gem is in one sentence? It is a package. Followed by a dad joke. <laughs> it's a package that in a package Ruby library. Usually goes on RubyGems.org. Place where you get to download. Um, so you, you might have this really cool piece of functionality. You use it in your project, and you realize that you can use it pretty much anywhere. You want to share it with the world, so you might create a gem. Turns out it's pretty easy to do. Um, <coughs> So I, I came up with this great idea. It's called the thing randomizer. You ask it for a random thing, and it gives you the random thing. This is something that totally everyone's going to need. So I'm going to make a gem for it. It's going to be pretty quick. Um, I found, actually, I'm going to use a gem to start the gem. Um, I found this one called uh, Gem Init. It'll make, it'll make like a, a scaffold. It'll just create the initial files that you need. So let's install this real quick. Uh, and now I'm going to call it thing randomizer. Oh, oh hang on a second. Let's put it in a directory. So I created these files for me a rake file, I created the lib directory, the test directory, and a gem spec file. What was the S yes flag? Oh, 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 sorry, I just skipped the check. My mistake. Yeah, I've done this before when I was uh, trying to come up with the talk. So there already exists a randomizer, but I yanked it. All right, so uh, the first thing you get is a gem spec. <laughs> This is the thing that defines some metadata, some information about your, your uh, gem. You might start at version, I'm going to start at 001, put in my name, my email address, home page for, home page for this gem. Uh, I'm going to put it here at GitHub. So pretty interesting so far, right? Just a little information about yourself. Uh, the first file you might look at is the... Wait, wait, wait. What the? Don't, don't you need a license? What was it? The license. License. All right, we'll talk about the license. You want to talk, talk about the license? It's up to you, man. M MIT license is a pretty good one. It's pretty unrestricted. OK. That's all I know about it. Um, so yeah, if you have a if you have a really simple uh, gem, only has one class, this is probably where your code's going to go. But I'm going to make this a little more complex. It's going to have a couple classes. It's going to be a module. In fact, I don't really need that. All right, so. Since that's a module, I'm going to create a, how do I make this bigger? Anybody know? I, I no. don't know if you can for this one. All right, so what I did is under the lib directory, I created a, a thing randomizer directory. Uh, this is where you know, my, my library code is going to go, under the thing randomizer uh, namespace. So, uh, like I said, this can go under the thing randomizer module. I'm going to make a class. And I'm going to randomize what? Names? How about names? 
Aaron, how did you kick this off again? Did you install a new? Who said that? Sorry, that was me. Um, all right, so the first thing I did was yes. I downloaded a, a gem called gem init, gem dash init, uh -huh. and um, I used that to run. What sublime text packages that? <laughs> one question. One question. At a time. <laughs> I ran a uh, gem in it and I gave it the name of the gem. Awesome. Thank you. And it's really bare bones what it gives you, but it's a nice place to start from. And I made an assumption that you would be more interested in, in answering questions and helping people build gems than in just going through things, but if that's not true, I can just... No, you're absolutely right. Okay. This is a really boring talk without questions. Okay. I promise you, it's very boring, very simple. To answer your question, you were asking about my font. Uh, it's, it's called Operator Mono. Operator? It costs money, but my company bought it for me, so it's okay. It's beautiful. It's Perks of the job. That's right. <laughs> All right, so my first piece of functionality, I'm going to return a random name. Let's just make some names real quick. Uh, what's that? Oh, okay. What's your name? What's that? B-A-U. What was that? B-A-U. G-H-M-A-N. Is that Bowman? Kyle? Google? You get single quotes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to do the obvious thing here. Return a random one. <laughs> Alright, so this is basically the functionality of my gem. Ooh. It's beautiful, isn't it? Alright, so I'm going to go in here and uh, Make sure that it gets loaded. I'm gonna go back to my gem spec. There's this, this line here, s.files. Uh, I've seen some magic here. Some people use git to list files or something. I don't know how to do that, so I'm just gonna uh, call it out explicitly. Can I ask a super dumb question? Yeah. If I make a gem, Will it automatically go on Ruby Gems? I'm going to get to that. Awesome. Ooh. That's a part of this talk. Because I don't want it to. <laughs> <laughs> no. The short answer is no. Yeah, you, you have to explicitly put it on Ruby Gems. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, like, like I said, I have a gem here. Um, actually, I haven't built a gem yet, so I can <coughs> gem build, uh, pass in the new gem spec. And look at that. You have a gem. It's still not a Ruby gem, though. It's just this, uh, this file right here. Uh, you can install it. Uh, you can use it. If I don't load it, then a random miser name doesn't exist, but if I require it, now it exists. And I got a random name. Can you count that gem? Just let's get it right now. If you build it. Oh, uh, count the gem itself? I, I don't know. Yeah, like you built it. I'd be interested in knowing what's in it. Binary? Oh, okay. If a, a gem is a glorified zip file, in all honesty, you can rename a dot zip and on a private. Okay. It's just how it packages everything together. Neat. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, actually, at this point, we can actually uh, push this up. Um, there's a little bit of authentication that goes on. I've already done that. You can find instructions online, but it's basically just gem push. And it's pushing. And there, we've we got a gem. So if we go to... There it is. You can download it. It's up there. <laughs> That's really how easy it is. We, we can uh, update it a little bit. Here, just real quick. Let's, let's do a random number generator. I'm 
got to make sure we uh, <coughs> we require it here. This file could be a lot more interesting. It doesn't need to be here. Require it here. That's uh, up our version number. It's 002 now. Rebuild it. works here just like it does in any other Ruby projects. You've got your test folder. Uh, the rank file that was automatically created sets up your rank task. And um, I'm not going to go through the writing test right now, but just with that run rank and all the writing test. That's it. Any yeah, questions? Have you ever done no, like Chris Chibble? Oh, you can also <laughs> use alert to bootstrap your own gems as well. That's cool. You can? Yes. How do you do that? Make a like, uh, build directory that's not a gem right now. Uh, and you have, you have bundler installed, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Bundle gem and then a name. Yeah, name of your gem. And the other, okay. Now, so it's going to ask you do you want mini test or RSpec for testing? Now, do you want MIT or not by default? Do you want a code of conduct? No. Okay, done. So go ahead and CD into a name. You have a git that repo already set up. You have mini tests already bootstrapped now. So Fantastic. And Travis already set up. Travis, where are you to go? Go and open up the gym spec. So it, is, so it pre fills in your GitHub username and email. So it's like some MIT. Um, scroll down. There is your files. There's the Git magic. So it'll just grab all the files you can get and shove it in there when it builds. It can give you right many test and bundler as dependencies to start with. That's awesome. And you have a failing test already. Yeah. You also do rig dash t. Oh, capital T, rather, sorry. And the gem commands have been converted to great commands. Build, clobber, install, release. It's fantastic. Sweet. That's way better than what I should. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, any, anything else about that? You mentioned yanking. What's that? Good question. If you publish a version of your gem that just doesn't work, uh, what is it, gem yank? And then the name of the gem, is that right? Um, yeah, just take away the, the most recent version, right? Or you, no, you supply a version. Right? I don't think you have to supply a version. Okay. I think I never yanked before. I just picked the it's, six. It's, it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's unpublishing a gem. What do you do if you're in an environment? I don't know. I'm pretty sure you can use other sources, but I've never done that. If you use bundler, you can specify different uh, source locations. You can have a private repository too. Yeah. I believe if you just run gem serve, you just set up your own local gem server. Start putting your own gem so there's right there. Like, there's like gem, gem sources, so the current sources, and then gem source <laughs> add. Yeah, so you can keep it for the gem server. It's a source bar, and that creates actually the Anything else? Is there any specific documentation or anything you want to learn? Yeah, good question. I actually used a, uh, a, a guy right here. at rubygems, guides.rubygems.org, and what I told you is basically what's on here. <clears throat> Can you talk about some of the challenges in building the fact that you have to do like, database and some other 
office. I can't because I've done it once ever a couple weeks ago. I take the advice, for example. So someone mentioned the advice earlier. I actually like the advice. <laughs> but um, there's there's a lot of like, that device. That's why it's hard. I think it's easier. We talk about like just general strategies, how to approach the gyms that you're going to be executing in other environments. I wouldn't be the right person to talk about that. Name space as much as you can. Keep everything separate. Don't override the standard library with your own class with the same name. Please don't goddamn it. Because <laughs> 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 you will run into trouble and people trying to expand extend your gym will run into trouble. They try to use stuff with hash and they're referring to the hash that you define inside your own name space. You get Ruby gets confused unless you explicitly then to force yourself to the global namespace with Facing it with a um, colon colon. Yeah. Cool. We good? Yeah, that's it. All right.